What's going on everyone? So I wanted to make this video to go over an e-commerce game plan you can use to succeed in 2019. So uh, I've actually been getting frequently asked about, you know, how do you adjust to the marketplace? Can you still come in? And is dropshipping still profitable? Is it still something I can come in and make money with? And I wanna make this video to answer all of those questions. So what I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna turn on this screen recording here. Here I kinda outlined some things I wanted to kinda cover in this video that I thought were super important for you guys to understand if you're looking to get real results in 2019. Now, one of the things I wanted to kinda start off with is really understanding the e-commerce ecosystem in the previous years versus how it's gonna be in 2019. Now, for those of you guys that don't know too much about the e-commerce ecosystem, uh, it's pretty simple. It's just the main components to kind of make up e-commerce and what you actually need to have in place to get results with e-commerce. So everything from you know your store, uh, how to actually create your store, how to optimize your store, product research, advertising, those are the main key components that kind of go into play. There are obviously some other ones like backend and team building and scaling, things like that, but the kind of core ones are for sure you know, within your storefront products and your marketing. And so I wanted to cover those things because in 2019, you can't necessarily do the exact same things you've been doing last year or even in the past. And there's a reason for it. Uh, one of the main reasons is because drop shipping has mainly been in the favor of the seller rather than the consumer. And the consumer marketplace is a lot more aware than it once was. Now to kind of clarify on that, when it comes to drop shipping, the reason why it's such a great opportunity is because of course, like some of you guys may already know or may have heard, you know, it requires little to no capital to kind of get started. And it's, you know, there's really low risk to kind of get things off the floor, right? You don't have to really order any inventory up front. You can, you know, set up your store, uh, find some products, run some advertising, and you don't even end up buying any inventory until somebody actually buys from you. Now, obviously that's great for us as the sellers and the marketers, but and the business owners and entrepreneurs, but what about the customers then, right? They're the ones that are actually buying from us, right? Buying our products, but then they're the ones that are also waiting two to three weeks to receive their products. And so that's a problem obviously, because if the consumer is on the other end of the spectrum where they're not benefiting as much as we are, well, they're the ones that are gonna drive our business. So we don't want things to always be like that. Now, I'm gonna kinda of cover the strategy that I think is gonna be really effective for anyone from here on out, and I've spoken about it before, but I kinda of wanted to cover it in a little more detail. So, in the past, right, when it comes to your storefront, your Shopify store, people have done business with dropshipping stores, and the experience from some of these stores have left bad taste in their mouth, right? Because of that, now when people are buying online and they're seeing these stores, these dropshipping stores that look like the stores they've previously done business with, they're a little bit on the fence, right? They're a little bit on edge. They don't really know if they wanna move forward and take a risk of having maybe not the best possible experience with that store or waiting two or three weeks to receive that product. And so because of that, you have to be able to adjust. And so the reason or the way that you wanna adjust and you know, kind of moving forward is you wanna spend a little more time on the actual design and optimization on your store, right? Focused on differentiating your store from some of the other known drop shipping stores and the reason why is because if not, you're gonna have that chance of putting yourself within the other stores that have left bad experiences with some people, when in reality, maybe you're not one of those and you have a lot better products or services. But one of the ways you wanna do that and make sure that you don't put yourself in that group of people is by spending a little more time on your store design because nowadays people can tell whether it's a drop shipping. So they kind of know that a lot of these stores have the same feel to it right? They have the same theme, same layouts, things like that. And so one of the ways you can kind of stand out and differentiate yourself off the start is by spending a little more time on the store, the design of your store. And one of the things you guys want to focus on from here, now this is something that I'm personally focused on a lot more, is really putting the customer first, right? This is what Amazon does and this is how they have grown to be the behemoth that they are. Uh, really putting all their emphasis solely on the customer. And I'm gonna go over a couple different ways that you can do that, but there's a few things you can do, right? Obviously focusing on providing good service to the customer as far as like being able to easily communicate with them about their product, if they have any questions, answering the questions, 
and just helping them out with the complete process that they're going through when they're doing business with you in your in your store but this is something you definitely want to address because if you're just planning on coming in and not spending too much time on your store design and your layout and you're just going to be recognized as you know one of these regular drop shipping stores and so you're not going to be able to get the results that you're actually looking for so even though some people may have Think that it's not as important to have like a well-designed store in reality it is because that's where people are buying from and so uh, that's one of the first pieces to the whole e-commerce ecosystem uh, the next section and one of the areas that I kind of wanted to put some emphasis on is products now previously in the past people have been doing bare minimum product research meaning that they've just been going on AliExpress looking through a little bit browsing and just picking random products that they don't really they don't even really know if there's an actual demand for and just putting them on their stores and trying to advertise and sell these products to people now this can work to a certain extent but it's not the most effective especially now with all the resources that you have available you have Google Trends you have Facebook all these different tools and resources that you can use literally for free so to get a lot more insight on the products that you're researching and so I recommend that I'm gonna kind of go over what to do moving forward but I would recommend for if you're planning on doing product research in 2019 uh, you definitely want to step your game up because you have all the resources available to you also another thing people have been doing is mainly focusing on selling the same cheap quality products without any unique selling propositions while getting negative feedback from customers now one thing I've been seeing while doing product research and also see how other do product research is one of the things you can see stand out is like in the comments of some of these ads you can see that people are, are leaving feedback on the products after receiving the products obviously you know specifically dropship products and so when you see that obviously the products that you're selling aren't as high quality that obviously isn't really good for the consumer. Again, that's that we're getting the better end of the stick in this one where obviously we're not putting the customer first, right? Because we're just focused on selling these cheap quality products, getting people to buy them and not really caring about how the customer, which is who's funding our business, you know, how they're actually enjoying the use of the product or the product itself. And so moving forward, you want to address that and you want to use that as a way to stand out and kind of come in and get a piece of the marketplace. So if you see that obviously people are leaving feedback on a specific product that's running and being advertised about the quality, you should use that and leverage that. And I'll talk about that in just a second here. But moving forward, one of the things you guys want to do while doing product research is really utilizing different resources to do product research, right? To actually verify that the products that you are researching and you're planning on testing are actually products that the market is interested in. For example, Google Trends. It's an easy resource that you can use. It's completely free and you can literally see the demand and interest that people have shown on the product in the past, right now, in the last seven days, last 30 minutes, like they give you so much insight, it's insane. So for you not to use, for example, Google Trends, it doesn't really make sense. And so that's what I would recommend moving forward. Uh, this really utilizes as many resources as possible because I see a lot of people that spend a lot of time trying to just research a lot of different products and then wanted to test all these different products but in reality if you can just do a lot better product research you can narrow down and reduce the amount of products you have to test to actually find a winning product right it's going to take a little bit more work up front but in the long run it's going to end up being a lot more effective for you because you're going to end up being able to save a lot of time and uh, resources right because if you don't have to spend as much money on advertising to find a winning product well that's a win-win so that's that when it comes to product research now while researching for example if you're able to see feedback from customers right like literally what you can do is you can while you're researching products you can find ads for these products on facebook for example you can look for ads that are currently running or that have been running in the past and you can see literally feedback from customers of what kind of problems they've had with the products or how their experience have been you know with that product individually right did they like it did they not like it did they hate the shipping times moving forward you want to leverage and use these things as a way to stand out and actually get a piece of the market that's something that we've learned that i personally have learned from a lot of bigger e-commerce entrepreneurs and this is how they actually look for spaces within the market to kind of create blue oceans. I've actually been reading this really good book. Um, it's called uh, Blue Ocean Strategy. I would recommend you guys pick this guy up. And they were basically given an example of how the wine industry is like a huge and very competitive space because there's like so many different kinds of wines and it's a very interesting market, of course. But there's been recently uh, this wine company, I think it's called like Yellowtail. This is the example they used. 
they found an interesting way to kind of come into the market. They found that there was a market for people that liked wine, but they didn't necessarily like the fact that of how many options of different kinds of wine there was and how they would have to do their research to really narrow down which wine is like the best for them and they would actually end up liking and going with. And so what Yellowtail decided to do is make it very simple for the consumer. So they went in and just found the most popular the red wine that was most commonly bought and purchased by consumers and the most popular white wine that was purchased by consumers. And they came, they rolled out to the market just two different kinds of wines compared to like everybody else that had like 17 different kinds of wines. And because of that, and also the way that they position their, their packaging and their logo and their branding, making their bottle uniquely designed with like this kangaroo and they use like bright colors. They made it a lot more fun. The design that they made was a lot more fun than typical wines. Doing those two things, coming into the marketplace, they were able to grab a huge chunk of the market and do really well in just a short term of time. Like within their first year, they actually blew up. I don't remember the exact statistics, but if you guys check the book out, you'll be able to learn more about them. That's kind of what you guys can do moving forward, right? Is find out what products are customers already having with products that they're already buying right how has their experience been and how can you come in with a unique selling proposition maybe you can find a better quality of the product a better version and maybe even sell it for less right if you can find a product that's already selling right now and then you can find a better version of it or just a more improved variant of that product and you can sell it for maybe a little less and have faster shipping you're going to grab a piece of that market no questions asked because why wouldn't people want to buy from you if they can get it for less get better quality and faster shipping so doing things like that does require doing a little more work like finding a for example a supplier that can get you the, the product finding a supplier that can get you your own packaging logos things like that your own custom made product made but it does allow you to create a lot more raving customers because now the quality of products that you're giving to your customers is a lot better and so you're able to actually generate more repeat customers which is what a lot of these bigger e-commerce businesses is completely built on. Nobody, no big e-commerce business focuses on just getting one-time customers, which is what a majority of people that are in the dropshipping space focus on, just getting only one-time customers. If you shift your focus by doing these things and take an extra step, you can actually get a lot more repeat customers and build a lot more long-term and sustainable business. So that's just that moving forward. I'm kind of just sharing and documenting what I'm planning on doing. I'm personally working on a few different unique and like custom made products with like my own unique packaging, logo, all these different things. And I'll be sharing my journey with you guys. We actually just finished right now getting like custom video ads for the product and we're gonna be launching it pretty soon here. So I'll show you guys the result of that moving forward here. But the last part of the puzzle, not the last part, but one of the components of the e-commerce ecosystem is your marketing. So before, people have barely put any time and effort into their marketing, right? They would find somebody else's video ads or somebody else's image ad that they're using and they would literally copy and paste it and use the exact same thing. And so that has only led to more ad fatigue and poor performance in ads because what happens is once the market gets used to seeing a specific kind of video ad, if you come in and just put your logo on it or your watermark and run the same kind of ad, it's not gonna do as well as when the first time that they actually saw that same uh, video ad, right? And so that causes ad fatigue, right? And also poor performance of ads, meaning that when you test the ad, you're not gonna get as good of a result and then you're gonna think that the product isn't good or that uh, the market isn't interested, but in reality, it's the video that or the ad itself that isn't performing as well as, as it could be. So one of the things you can do moving forward is simply spend a lot more time on your marketing efforts. We actually did a student interview with uh, two students or clients and customers that we worked with uh, within the last year or so. You guys can probably see the video uh, in my channel. I think it was a few videos back. These guys are basically now they're doing like anywhere from three to 5K a day. And we, we spent some time interviewing them. And one of the things that they said led to their success was really the way that they did their advertising and their marketing. They said they were spending two to three hours editing ads that they were making for their products. They were making unique videos and unique ads. And that's what actually led to them finding success with the products that were testing and getting really insane ROI with uh, their advertising. And so if these guys are doing things like that, like going above and beyond and spending two or three hours for a single video ad, but it's getting them those kind of results, we should be doing the same thing. And some of you guys that are watching should focus on doing the same thing. Now, again, that's a little bit harder, right? Because you do either have to get someone that can professionally make you these video ads, or you have to order the product yourself and kind of take 
your own professional videos, things like that, but it's not that difficult. I'm actually gonna be uh, moving forward, I'm gonna be making specific videos on each of these concepts or components to the e-commerce ecosystem and diving deep onto how we do it in-house uh, between me and my business partner. But this is how you guys are gonna get a competitive edge in the market because if you just try to always, always, always just use other people's videos and other people's ads, there's gonna be no way for you to stand out and get better results, right? Because you're only gonna get maybe as good or less results than what that person got with that ad, right? And so differentiating, making unique content for advertising uh, is gonna help you out a lot. And it's also gonna help out for branding purposes because from here on out, we should be using drop shipping as a way to prove our concepts with some of the products that we're researching and wanna test out to figure out if the market actually is interested in these products. But then the focus from there on out, after you're generating consistent sales and you find a winning product, is to switch over to the more of the branding and having your own products and packaging and logos, all that great stuff. So based on my experience and results from the top 1% of e-commerce businesses, all of these different components have to be congruent in order for you to get results and to actually have a long-term business. And that's why I wanted to kind of touch on each of these components because in reality, right, even if you have the best store, but then really cheap quality products and people hate your products and they don't like doing business with you, that's gonna lead to there being some incongruency and it's gonna lead to you not being able to really get the long-term and sustainable results you're looking for. Same thing with if you have the best products but then your advertising is completely trash, right? There's gonna be some incongruency. And so what I have found to work really well and based off, again, my experience, but other businesses that I've also researched is having all three of those in line, right? And we also didn't get to cover the last two, which is um, the back end with like, you know, email marketing, upsell and things like that, and also team building so you can scale and automate the business. But those three, for the most part, to get things off the floor have to be in line for you to get real results. So that's pretty much it for this video. That pretty much covered a lot what I, what, what I wanted to go over. Again, I'm gonna make more videos on each of these components a lot more in depth, and I'll show you guys a lot more like other examples, things like that, but I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys learned anything from this video and got any value, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like on the video. Also, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions below about anything that we went over as far as the e-commerce ecosystem or the e-commerce game plan to succeed in 2019. Um, I'd appreciate all the feedback. Any questions you guys have, drop them in the comments below. And if you haven't already, make sure you join the family, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.